Have you ever had a gut feeling about something? Maybe you felt butterflies in your tummy before speaking in public, or your stomach sank when you heard bad news. That's not just a poetic expression. That's our biology. Your gut and your brain are in this constant communication, shaping your mood, memory, even your immune function, and potentially your risk for future neurodegenerative diseases. Today, we're going to explore how your gut function might determine your brain's future. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why nurturing your gut is one of the most powerful things that you can do to protect your mind and age with grace. Hi, I'm Dr. Cynthia Leibert, founder of Rethink Aging and a board-certified family physician with expertise in functional medicine. I work with high-performing, health-conscious adults who are in midlife and want to preserve their brain power, prevent dementia, and live with clarity and vitality and strength and resilience well into the future. So if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you're in the right place, <laughs> uh, especially if you're starting to notice shifts in your memory, energy, mood, or digestion. And I want you to know that these are not just random signs of aging. They are early signs. And one of the most overlooked causes, root causes of these changes um, lies not in our brains, but actually in the gut. In this episode, we're going to explore the powerful gut-brain connection, how your digestive system can play a central role in your cognitive health, your emotional stability, your risk for future diseases like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and even how well your blood vessels are working, how your metabolism is functioning. We know that the gut and brain are intimately linked through what's called the gut-brain axis. This is a bi-directional communication system, like a highway of information flowing from brain to gut and back and forth. It is involving the, the vagus nerve, our immune system, hormones, and the all famous gut microbiome. So I want you to think of your gut as the mission control center for many of your body's systems. The gut produces neurotransmitters like serotonin and GABA, and the gut regulates inflammation to a large degree. It trains your immune system and when the gut is disrupted through stress, poor diet, toxins, infection, it can quietly set the stage for cognitive decline and emotional challenges down the road. So let's talk about Parkinson's disease. Most people think of it as a brain disorder, but the earliest signs are often gastrointestinal, like chronic constipation. We can also see a loss of smell and subtle mood changes years before diagnosis. Studies show that an abnormal protein uh, seen in Parkinson's disease called alpha-synuclein, it can begin in the gut and travel up to the brain along the vagus nerve. That's not just a correlation now, it's actually a potential causal pathway that scientists are investigating. And it tells us that our brain-first approaches to Parkinson's disease may be starting too late. We need to start in the gut. Uh, but Parkinson's is just one piece of the puzzle. Cognitive decline doesn't always start in the brain. It often begins in the gut, like a, a slow leak in the basement that eventually kind of seeps down into the foundation. Chronic, low-grade inflammation is one of the most consistent drivers of neurodegeneration. And much of that inflammatory burden starts in the digestive tract. 
when the gut is compromised, the brain eventually pays the price for that. And a damaged gut lining, we, we can call it a leaky gut or intestinal permeability, that allows inflammatory molecules like LPS, stands for lipopolysaccharide, to enter the bloodstream. And that can trigger an immune response that can eventually reach our brain. Uh, the, the hallmark of neurodegeneration is neuroinflammation. We see this in Alzheimer's disease and other dementia, dementias, and that begins oftentimes in the gut. At the same time, if our gut function is poor uh, and the lining is not working well, that can impair absorption of nutrients. And so even if you're eating all the right foods, your brain is not getting them because they're not being absorbed. It's like pouring premium fuel into a car with a, a clogged fuel line. Your body is just not getting what it needs to the right destination. And the impact our gut can have doesn't stop there. Gut health plays a central role in our metabolic function, how well we regulate blood sugar, manage insulin, and maintain a healthy weight. When the gut is inflamed or imbalanced, it can quietly disrupt our metabolic machinery of the body. For example, after you have a meal, if your blood sugar spikes, th this can often be a signal that the gut microbiome is disrupted, that we have dysbiosis, and that can uh, cause an imbalance in the uh, short-chain fatty acids, which are beneficial compounds that feed the lining of our gut. And then we get inflammation that leads to endothelial dysfunction in the linings of the blood vessels um, throughout the body, but especially in the brain. We can also see insulin resistance being tied to gut health. When we are insulin resistant, it doesn't just lead to weight gain around the middle and fatigue and increased risk for diabetes. It's also a well-established risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, which is sometimes called type 3 diabetes. And when visceral fat increases, that's the, the fat around our internal organs, that fat can become metabolically active and release inflammatory cytokines that can worsen our uh, the gut permeability. It can increase the disruption of the barrier in the gut and lead to brain inflammation that way. We'll talk more about these topics in future episodes, especially the visceral fat piece. But our body is a web, and when the gut is out of balance, the entire system goes towards dysfunction. And when it's restored, we can build our health on a solid foundation for metabolic flexibility, vascular integrity, and our brain function. So while most people think of the gut in terms of digestion, it's also influencing your circulation, your brain function, um, cellular aging, and that happens day in and day out depending on how our gut is functioning. So now I want to shift gears and talk about mental health. We've known for a while that mood disorders like anxiety and depression are linked to gut microbiome dysfunction. The gut microbiome actually produces key neurochemicals that regulate our mood, our focus, our, our resilience. Uh, we do know, unfortunately, that people with chronic depression, particularly those who suffer in midlife, have a higher risk of developing dementia later on in life. So it's not simply a psychological issue. It's, it's a physiological pattern. Chronic low-grade inflammation, disrupted sleep architecture, uh, impaired mitochondrial function, and altered neurotransmitter uh, signaling, all of these are interconnected, and many of these processes are deeply influenced by our gut health. So these, these aren't just isolated symptoms. Mood and digestive issues, they're all these interconnected threads that can uh, be a part of our early risk factors for cognitive decline. So if this feels overwhelming, I want you to just Take a deep breath with me. Uh, there, You don't have to fix everything with your gut overnight, but we do need a strategy, something that helps us to get to the 
the root and begin healing. So in functional medicine, we have a framework we use called the 5R functional medicine framework, and that's to systematically approach gut function in a way that's sustainable and that supports our long-term health. So let me walk you through it. Number one is to remove. First, we identify and we remove what's causing harm in the body. That means getting rid of things like inflammatory foods, like processed foods and snacks, excessive added sugar and, and alcohol. But it also uh, includes remo uh, removing hidden irritants like certain medications, for example, NSAIDs, Advil, ibuprofen, environmental toxins, and gut infections like H. pylori, Candida, or SIBO. So if your gut lining is, is having you know, some challenges, that's where we want to start. We want to remove the stressors and start calming that inflammation and giving your digestive system some space to rest. So practically speaking, you can just start tracking how you feel after meals. Are you dealing with gas and bloating and fatigue or brain fog? These could be signs that you have some hidden food sensitivities that might be worth investigating. So that's number one, remove. Number two is to replace. We support digestion by adding back what's missing from the body for optimal function, especially as we age. Many people in midlife or beyond uh, start to produce less stomach acid and fewer digestive enzymes, even if the diet is healthy. So without adequate bile, uh, digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, the body can't properly break down food or absorb the nutrients. So this can leave us undernourished and uh, can have a, a big impact on the brain. So if you experience indigestion or just heaviness after your meals, or if you're seeing undigested food in your stools, you may benefit from a digestive enzyme support, you know, bitters, Swedish bitters, uh, digestive supplements, even apple cider vinegar before meals, assuming there's no contraindications like ulcers or things like that. So definitely consult your physician. Number three of the 5R program is to re-inoculate. Now we bring back the good guys. This step is all about rebuilding a healthy, diverse microbiome using probiotics, prebiotics, and fermented foods. These beneficial microbes produce short-chain fatty acids that nourish our gut lining and reduce inflammation throughout the body, including the brain. But not all probiotics are created equal. Strain specificity does matter, and prebiotics like resistant starches and polyphenol-rich foods, think berries and flax seeds, green tea, artichokes, these all help to feed the good bacteria that we're trying to grow. <laughs> so start small, add in maybe a tablespoon of sauerkraut or kimchi on a couple of times a week or so. Try a professionally recommended probiotic and rotate in all those beautiful, colorful foods, uh, plants and veggies and fruits that help to nurture our microbiome. The fourth R is to repair. So we've got our irritants removed in the first step. Uh, the beneficial microbes are returning, and it's time to repair the gut lining. This is where targeted nutrients like zinc carnosine, L-glutamine, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin A, and collagen, and also herbs like marshmallow root, slippery elm bark, and aloe vera, these help to soothe the lining and also to rebuild the integrity of the intestinal wall and can calm overactive immune activation. So when the gut lining is intact, 
that's when your immune system uh, is functioning well. It's not constantly on high alert. And that has a calming effect downstream on our brain, our mood, our energy. So many people benefit from a temporary gut repair protocol. We do this in my medical practice. We use uh, medical foods or shakes for four to six weeks or so and a targeted uh, supplement plan. Often we do advanced diagnostics and testing to, to really uh, focus in on the best strategy. The fifth R is to rebalance. We zoom out and we look at the whole system. You can have the perfect supplement plan and still struggle if your nervous system is dysregulated. Stress, poor sleep, lack of movement, adequate exercise, and circadian rhythm disruption all can impair our gut healing and increase our risk for dementia. So this phase, the fifth R, is all about aligning your lifestyle with, with optimal biology. That means prioritizing sleep, building stress resilience through practices like prayer and breath work and gentle stretching, just creating rhythms in your day that send your body a signal of safety. So we want to aim for a consistent wake sleep time. I know that might be hard in the summertime or on weekends, but uh, the more consistent, the better. Uh, taking just five to 10 minutes a day and doing focused breathing and stilling the body. These send just really powerful calming messages to our gut and our brain. I want to be clear that this isn't a magic fix. It's a roadmap. This is a healing journey and it is so, so very important to address any kind of gut symptoms that you might be having, whether it's acid reflux or bloating, belching, diarrhea, constipation. These are friendly signals from your body that something is off and that you can do something about it. It will not only help with those symptoms, but it may very well help to ward off chronic degenerative diseases in the future. So the good news is that we can do something about these symptoms and it can really shift our health trajectory. Your gut, it's not a separate part of you. It is central to how we age, our emotions, our mental health, our metabolic health, and taking care of our gut is, it's not just about avoiding disease. It's about laying a foundation for resilience so we can live the lives that we want to in our 50s and 60s and, and beyond. So if you are experiencing uh, brain fog or memory issues or mood swings or digestive issues, those aren't just nuisances. They are clues. And so um, your, your duty is to pay attention to your body and, and start tracking your symptoms. Get the, la the, the right lab work and you can work with someone like me, a functional medicine expert who looks at the whole picture, not just a single system. So you don't have to do this alone. If you're ready to take your health to the next level, I invite you to check out my Rethink Aging community. This is where we equip you, we educate, and walk alongside you to help uh, over the course of a year to build your brain vitality from the inside out. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Rethink Aging, please like, subscribe, and share it with someone you love. For more episodes and highlights from the show, you can check out more videos right here and here. I also invite you to join the Rethink Aging community at caringforthebody.org, where you can find more resources on how to better protect your brain, strengthen your body, and live with purpose. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next episode.